What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin, the finale. In the last episode, we finished up the Distant Spring, we got four parts in one day, and still have plenty of time to spare, actually. So, I showed off a couple of the secret enemies in this game at the impact site, namely Mamuta and Gulix, and then we fought the Smoky Prog in the Distant Spring, which was surprisingly not as much of a bloodbath as I'd anticipated. And of course, we unlocked the final trial, the last place where we we're going to find the only remaining part keeping us from heading back to our home planet and visiting our lovely family. So, without further ado, I'm excited to get into the final trial, so let's hop into it and see what the last place in the game has to offer. So right off the bat, just from the music, you can tell it's going to be a little bit more menacing. But again, one of the things I like to do when I start a level is to look at the map, and you can see this place is not big. It's a very small region. We have this short path that looks like pretty complicated terrain, leading to a circular area with gates on both sides with our last remaining part. But um, other than that, there's not a whole lot to the place, which makes it very feasible to do this in one day. I'm going to be withdrawing a very specific amount of Pikmin to accomplish different tasks. And while they're coming out of the onion, we will take a brief look at the landscape and just kind of see what we're working with. You can see on the right here we have some island hopping we're going to do. In the middle there's a bomb or a stone wall we need to bomb, some bridges we need to build, and on the left there's some fire. So you can see that we're probably going to be using all the different Pikmin and their various abilities. May have left a few blues. Come on. Come on. Ah, not the yellows. There we go. So yeah, um, let's let's hop into it, right? <laughs> we can get them started on some of the bridge building. You can see though there's something blocking the end of the bridge. So even if they build this bridge, their pathway outwards is actually gonna be blocked still. So we're gonna need to do something else for that. And that's something else. Well, we're gonna have to get other Pikmin to handle it. So you guys can work on that for now. And then while you are doing that, we're gonna try and get around that pathway in a different section. So you can see there are two curved path here. Or two curved path here. Two curved paths here. But what's the same about both of them is they have these ledges. And we can take advantage of these ledges to guide the Pikmin along like we did in the Distant Spring. And then what happens at the end? Well, you can see now, there's a box that we can move with those Pikmin. So they're gonna be working on that for a while. And while they're doing that, we got a decent amount of time. They just finished moving the box. We're gonna do some island hopping with the yellows. This is admittedly my least favorite part of this level. <laughs> just because you have to be so precise with your, with your throws. Maybe not like super, super precise, but fairly precise. And the whole reason to do so is to get the yellows over here so they can pick up some bombs. Again, to take care of that stone wall we saw in the middle that the blues just gave us access to, or are in the process of giving us access to. One of the things this level requires though is you have to know that when you throw the yellow Pikmin with bombs, if you walk into them, they will not drop their bombs. But if you whistle for them, they will. So you have to be absolutely careful not to do that. <laughs> there are also only four bombs that you can access right off the bat. So you don't want to uh, get ahead of yourself. All right. So that handles that wall. And with that, we're, we're pretty much at that circular area that we saw on the map before. And you can see that's where the star is. That's where the part should be. But that certainly doesn't look like a part, and that's not a coincidence. In fact, this is not the first time we've even encountered a situation like this. With the Snagrit, we looked for where the part should have been and couldn't quite find it, could we? And instead, it turned out to be buried underground, essentially. So, the game is kind of leading you into the idea that maybe everything isn't what it seems. It's highly unlikely that what we saw there is actually the the part itself but anyways we don't need the blue pikmin anymore actually we're gonna need quite a few red pikmin 
and some yellow pigment. So let's do that. How many do we have? 20 something. All right, I think we'll want like, I think 65 is a good number. And then the rest can be yellows. <clears throat> All right. We are ready to head on our quest. Gotta use the C-Stick to kind of thin out. Come on, guys. <laughs> Do a nice single file line. There we go. So that they don't fall into the water. And then we'll regroup to let our buds catch up to us so they don't get caught on any of the doors. And you'll see we're in this, like, sandy area, and that thing is moving in the center. Yeah, so that's obviously going to be our final boss that we're going to have to deal with. Something neat is we have this gate here, which is going to give us access to some bomb rocks on the other side, which again is a kind of a game design help or assistance to let you know that, hey, maybe you should bring some yellow Pikmin to help out with this boss. Maybe bomb rocks will be a necessity for however you deal with it. So there's one on the left, there's one right in front of the gate, and then there's actually another one on the right. But we're going to really load up here because we do not want to run out of bomb rocks. All right, and then what we'll do is, let's see if we can um, flower up a bit. Got a nice tight pack there. That should probably do it for everyone, honestly. All right, come on, guys. We've got a, we've got a game to finish. We've got a final boss to fight. So what I'm gonna do for my strategy is Unfortunately, have to sacrifice some Pikmin. <laughs> We're gonna bring them over there. Got our bomb squad over here. You two, come on. <laughs> we'll leave you over there. And then we'll have the real damage dealers right here. Okay. So, let's go take a look at what's going on in here. Look at that thing, look at how massive it is. Meet the Emperor Bullblax. Look at how huge it is. So what it's going to do is it's going to approach us, and then it's going to try to just gobble up our Pikmin. Wait, what? No! You're supposed to approach us and try to gobble up the Pikmin! So I think we're actually going to have to sacrifice, or we're going to sacrifice a few Pikmin in order to do so. You can try to get them to drop the, the bomb. But I'm not very good at that. Oh, come on! So then while he's stunned, you can toss your Pikmin at him. Come on back, guys. Don't get crushed, don't get crushed. Okay, good. So again, the damage dealing squad. And then the bomb squad. I do not need that many of you guys. Just one. <laughs> Just one. Thank you. Unless you're, you know, really eager. Okay, so you're gonna do that. Come on. Don't get hit by the bomb. All right, and then move in for the attack. Come on. All right, come on back, guys. Come on. Okay, that was pretty successful, actually. So we'll, we'll take that. We've already done a quarter damage and we're about halfway through the day. You can see this thing has a massive amount of health. So it really takes quite a bit of work to get through it. I want him to get a little bit closer. Come on. Oh man. I really don't want to have to sacrifice the Pikmin. But it's looking like that's more and more going to be the case. And unfortunately, every time he keeps tracking after us to come over here, he's going to walk all the way back, which takes him far away and, of course, eats up time. Oh no, he missed, first of all, and that would have been problematic just because... Come on, there's a Pikmin right here waiting for you! Uh, because we brought the bomb Pikmin in with our attacking squad, which is an absolute recipe for disaster. What? Come on! No! Eat the, eat the Pikmin! We're running out of time! Emperor Bullblax, don't do this to me! We've got a fight to finish! Come on! Come on over, come on. 
Okay. Alright, you got him. Damage dealing squad coming in. And attack! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh. We just lost 19 Pikmin! That's the annoying thing. If you miss. They're gonna attack its feet and then just get absolutely crushed. Ugh, that hurts. All right, come on in. In for the damage, come on. Come on, no, no, no. Whew. All right, he made it. We're living. Maybe we can double bomb this time. There is a way to do it without having to sacrifice the yellow Pikmin. I'm just not good at it. <laughs> Come on over. Come on over this way. Here we go. This is this is my strategy. And it's definitely not perfect, but it's not bad. The bombs themselves do damage, which is um, obviously nice. Okay. Oh man, you can see the sun. The sun is starting to set a bit. We do not need nine. Four? Alright. I'm game. <laughs> Just so we can actually beat him. Come on. Come on, Emperor Bullblax, I'm over here, man! <laughs> so now he's got a new attack. He jumps. Up to quite a few times. There's the third time. He's gotta get out of the way. Did he get him? Okay, he did. Okay, good. And... Alright. Damage squad, go on! Come on! Alright, that was a pretty good amount of damage. That was pretty good. I think we might actually be able to do it with one more cycle. Maybe. It's gonna be close, though. It's also gonna be close if we're able to actually do everything after we hopefully, you know, beat him. Alright. Come on, squad. Come on, this is it. This is your time to shine. This is where it counts. Come on, come on. So close. Yes! We defeated the Emperor Bullblacks. Look at what's going on on screen. That's pretty crazy with all the sand coming up. Wow. At long last, I found the final part. My secret safe. And it's as full as ever. How glad I am that I've persisted in my search without losing hope. Now I can leave this planet without any regrets. Maybe I'll even stop and pick up some souvenirs for my wife and kids back on planet Hokotate. I bet there was an animation for when the Emperor Bullblax falls and all like the dust comes up and everything as the treasures come out. And it just couldn't stop while this text appeared. But anyways, the secret safe. An excellent name for his piggy bank. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is try to bring back everything we can. He drops quite a bit of stuff. We'll, we'll have the reds take that back for now. Um, yeah, t actually just take take all this back. <laughs> because quite frankly, I don't want to mess around with these Pikmin and the Bomb Rocks. Come on. Bomb Rocks are dangerous. Very, very dangerous. So what we are going to do is try to beat them back. They are having a tough time there. I don't know if you saw that, but the pellets were interacting in an interesting manner. What's pretty nice is that if you put the yellow Pikmin back in like that, they'll drop all of their bomb rocks. Alright, so these guys are coming back with that. So what I would like to do is withdraw a bunch of yellows. That should be good. So they can take back a bunch of those. Oh man, this might be kind of close. One thing I like to do though is um, make it so that at the end we have a nice squad. I've made yet another- oh, come on, don't be telling me this on the final day. On the final day, Olimar, is when taking back the secret safe that they're able to 
All right, come on, guys. Come on. We're almost there. Wait, no, stop taking the... Oh, man. I don't like this. I don't like this. Are we not gonna make it? Are we not gonna make it? <sighs> Why did they pick up the bombs? Oh, we might not make it, guys. We might not make it. Come on. Come on. Come on, guys. I believe in you. You can do it. Oh no, I don't know if they're gonna do it. <laughs> guys, I don't know if they're gonna do it. It's gonna be really close. Actually, maybe not. They might not be close at all. Come on, come on. Three, two... Come on, you're so close. You're so close, you're so close. Zero, come on, come on. Yes! <laughs> oh my goodness. That was so close. That was so close. I was hoping I'd have more yellow Pikmin to throw onto the, the bank as well. I was hoping I'd have more Pikmin, but they kept grabbing the rocks. So I didn't have as much of a squad to carry back in time, but that was literally like down to the last second. Wow. Whew. I have finally recovered every ship part. Now I can return home to Hokotape. There it is! The dolphin fully restored! Look how beautiful it is. I always get a little bit emotional during this cutscene. <laughs> I love that they show the Pikmin, like, waving to Alamar goodbye, and then, unlike every other night, the Pikmin are fighting off the enemies in the middle of the night. They are no longer the prey, they are the predators. They've learned from Alamar and are surviving on their own even better now. So off goes the dolphin. And up come a bunch of onions, including colors we haven't seen yet. There he goes, Captain Olimar, in the fully restored dolphin, back to his home. So there you have it, 30 parts in 13 days with 972 surviving Pikmin. Less than 100 total Pikmin lost, which was not too bad. And unfortunately, <laughs> I bet if we didn't have those red Pikmin die and have to sacrifice some of the yellow Pikmin, we might have even hit 1,000. I'm actually really sad we didn't reach it. Makes me wish we took down a couple Wallywogs when we had time in the distant spring. But nevertheless, this is the best I've done. This is the fastest I've ever beaten the game. The most Pikmin I've ever sprouted and the fewest Pikmin I've lost. Um, and so I'm really happy with this result. 1,375 Pikmin ever sprouted. That's nuts. Wow. All right. Here's a list of all the parts. 
shows you which are essential, which are not necessary. Most of them are conveniences for Olimar, like the space float or the massage machine. Um, the secret safe, of course. Don't want to return empty-handed. So I guess we'll save. And now we have the credits. Wow, um, what a game. Like I said, I, I love that ending. It's interesting. As soon as you bring the secret safe back, the game instantly ends. You can't do anything more on that any remainder with any remainder of the day. I can't even believe we got it back at like the last second. Like split second, really. Um, it's really cool seeing all the different types of Pikmin carry it back. And I love that they wave goodbye. And it's so clear that they've learned from and enjoyed the time with Olimar, much like Olimar has learned from and taken an interest in them as well. And yeah, you finally get to go home. It's really cool. Olimar was crash landed and learned to live together and work together with these Pikmin, these creatures that he never met before, was observing and taking notes on what he noted about them and the planet as a whole, as he desperately tried to survive and return to the family that he loves. And all the while, of course, there's the more humorous side of things, where we learn about <laughs> Olimar and his horrible spending habits and his gullibility um, at the hands of salesmen or whatever it may be. And as he doesn't understand half of what's in his ship, some of it necessary, some of it completely unnecessary. And there's so much humor in the descriptions of the Pikmin, the items that you're, the parts that you find, and of course in each journal entry at the end. There's so much to love about this game. The world is great. There are only four, and like the, I guess five, if you include the final trial levels or worlds, um, but each of them has its own very distinct atmosphere, and I think it does a really great job at cultivating the atmosphere and the ambiance it's going for. And the music is incredible. It's not, you know, outstanding. You're able to focus on what you need to do. It's great background music. It's very calming, despite the tense um, action of real-time strategy as you're trying to command these units and do everything you want to do uh, without dying, of course. It's it's excellent. Um, I love the gameplay. It really keeps you, you know, cognitively intact, <laughs> um, very much in the game the whole time. Having to command these units, adapt to things as they don't go your way, plan ahead, and of course, doing so in again a very accessible, a very fun, a very calm environment, or a very playful set of characters and such. So this is the armored cannon beetle. This migrant lithopod has developed a stronger carapace than its relatives. This is the, I think, the Piclopedia. It's basically the bestiary of the game. There's beady long legs. It's fun, you get to look back at all the monsters you defeated. <laughs> Waxy secretions from this creature's distinctive armored shell. Oh, from, <laughs> not its form. Waxy secretions form its shell. And they show, of course, a little bit of gameplay involving it. There's the bread bug. This creature's thick hide protects it from most attackers. You can see how the Snagrits can be quite troublesome. <laughs> the Burrowing Snagrit. The bluish hue of its feathers distinguishes it from the Burrowing Snarrow, which of course we haven't met <laughs> yet. There's the Candy Pop Bud. Again, honestly, I don't really find them too helpful, but could this be the next step in Pikmin evolution? Like the Pikmin themselves, it has many mysteries. Only really used them for that one time. This Pikmin giving the, the dwarf bull bear a run for its money. Poor Pikmin. A bull bear at an early stage of development in its life cycle. This specimen appears to be nearly fully developed. Dwarf Bulborb. Although similar in appearance to Bulborbs, these belong to a totally different species. That totally blew my mind the first time I read that. I was like, wait, what? Look at this thing. Right? What a great final boss, Emperor Bullblax. This massive grub dog buries itself when hunting, and does a good job of concealing itself. There's a lot to conceal. <laughs> Fiery Blowhog. This creature expels a combustible phosphor that ignites at moderate temperatures. Oh man, this thing. <laughs> such a, such a pain. The Swooping Snitch Bug. This rare species uses its antenna as wings. I wish it were more rare. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the clip I was talking about! It's Gulix, but it's in 
the forest navel, right? A watery gelatinous membrane protects this creature's nervous system. Yeah, but I don't think you can ever fight it there. Which means this has to be some really early footage they're using from development or a debug mode or something like that. These are honey wisps. This creature collects nectar for the larvae waiting in its nest. Of course, we can knock it down if we throw some Pikmin. And then there is the, uh, the iridescent flint beetle. This forager stores undigested pellets in its stomach for winter. So yeah, you can get nectar, you can get pellets for defeating it or landing on it. Of course, here you can see Mamata. Again, th this creature seems fond of flowers, but only for their decorative properties. Which is just like softening, or like heartwarming, right? <laughs> Although, I think that was showing Mamata in the distant spring, which I don't think happens. Pearly Clam Clamp? That's what it's called. Though beautiful, this mollusk's pearls are thin and fragile. Again, I don't... I think that was in the distant spring, but I don't think that was there. <laughs> I think it's only in the impact site. Maybe I just didn't explore well enough, but... Pellet Posey, this sparsely growing plant is able to crystallize nectar into round pellets. And then, of course, the Puff Stool. What are you doing without fire pigment there, man? <laughs> Puff stool. Many consider this walking fungus a delicacy. And you can see how it's like poisoning the the pigment around it. We didn't get to see it, but I'm glad they showed it there. Then the puffy blowhog. Instead of breathing fire, this species uses hydrogen to float. Which is pretty cool. I like that there's a little bit of like an internal reasoning for the different types of species of similarly related you know, enemies. The Shear Grub, that's what they're called. Males of this species are purple and have an armored head. Shear Wig. The males of this species are able to fly, but the females remain underground. There it is. He's trying to fight it, or they're trying to fight it with out water picks? Wow. Smoky Prog, thought to be a malformed larval mamuta. I think is one. That's one of the inter most interesting enemies in this game, honestly. The Smoky Prog, the Spotty Bull Bear. This rare subspecies of bull orb has a certain indefatigability. <laughs> in it can't be fatigued. What a word! I don't think I've ever heard that before in my life. Spotty Bull orb. This nocturnal hunter feeds mostly on small animals returning to their nests at night. Again, which is fitting with the you know cutscenes we see when we round up every night at sunset. Water Dumple. This aquatic creature is a close relative of the Bulborb. The Wogpole. <laughs> this creature appears to be a newborn yellow Wollywog in tadpole form. Again, they're really fun to chase with all the marked. <laughs> oh no! Wollywog. This creature's coloration results from remaining sheltered in its cavernous dwelling. And then, of course, the, the yellow one. The yellow Wallywog. After evolution led to the development of its specialized jumping ability, this amphibian actually lost much of its ability to swim. It's kind of funny, you can tell from its, like, super bulky body, and then, you know, thin legs. The end. Happy. So this is the happy ending, if you get all of the parts. Um, there is a normal ending for not getting every single part, but just getting the required ones. And then there is a wrong ending, a bad ending, which I will show um, in a bonus video. But yeah, that's that's the end. It's crazy to think this adventure is over. So that's Pikmin. Uh, we explored all of the areas. We found all the parts. We read all the descriptions, enjoyed so many of Olimar's remarks on his uh, interesting decisions to equip his ship and everything. You'll notice there is a challenge mode down here. If you go to the challenge mode, we're treated to a nice jingle. It's the single day challenge mode. So I have actually never done challenge mode. For what it's worth, I mean, like I said, I played this game when I was a kid. I didn't really beat it. I didn't understand it very well. I eventually watched some Let's Play of it uh, by Chuck and Conroy, and I was inspired to play it again. I beat it, was really happy. I played this game about a week ago and beat it uh, for the first, or in the quickest time I had, and that was 20 days. And now I've beaten it in 13 days, which is awesome. But again, 
I haven't actually ventured into the challenge mode. I don't think I'm that good at the game. But if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, let me know and I can maybe do some bonus episodes on it. There's some really talented Pikmin players that have some great challenge mode runs on YouTube, though, that I have seen, and I, I couldn't even compare the slightest. But, um, yeah, that is Pikmin. Again, this is a game that I think has so much charm, so much character, and is really fun from a gameplay standpoint. It is relatively short, but if it's your first time playing, you can see how it could be so much fun to just explore the worlds, explore the environments, just like Olimar, who is observing the Pikmin, trying to identify their different traits, and observing the environment around him, trying to learn how to survive in it. A player who's going into this blind can go around and observe the world that they're not familiar with, learn enemy patterns, learn about different types of walls, different ways to use bomb rocks, different routes around the same maps, and then try to utilize them to navigate with the Pikmin and accomplish their goals. And even if you don't succeed your first time within the 30 days, you can try again with that newfound knowledge and, and hopefully do better. And yeah, there's, there's just so much to love about this game. Uh, like I said, the Pikmin are adorable. It has the intense strategic planning of a real-time strategy game with the shell of a very fun-loving, you know, warm-hearted Nintendo game. And that goes a long way, and it manifests in the visuals, the music, the, the characters, everything about it. So, again, I, I just love this game, and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And even if you haven't played the game yourself and think, now I've seen it all, what, what point is there in playing? There is merit in trying to experience yourself. Um, the gameplay itself is definitely worth um, giving a go. So please do. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the bonus episodes. We only saw the journal entries for days 13 or up to day 14 during that little bonus segment where I was going through the secret enemies. However, you can check the bonus or the journal entries for all of the other days um, in one of the bonus episodes. I'll, I'll do that and I'll show off the wrong endings and all that jazz. <laughs> but let's see what it says on the, on the menu after you beat the game. I don't actually know 100%. So it still says day 13, we can continue our game from where we left off. Interesting. So it shows that it's not, so it's like kind of filled in there, right? Or no, it's not. It's just continuing from beforehand. So if you hit why there's the ship's log, you can review the diary. We obviously don't have entries 13 through 30. So in a bonus episode, again, I'll show off the rest of the Olimar's voyage log and the different endings and maybe a challenge mode or two. But I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Thank you so much for watching and joining me in this journey through a game that is really near and dear to me. And I, I hope you had a good time. But until the bonus episode, if you decide to watch it, or the next Let's Play of mine, you decide to watch whatever that may be, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.